of when it was full lockdown. Right. Um, there was one day I was trying to get um, eldest daughter out for a walk just okay. because I was like, I need to get out of the house. Just need to go for a walk around the block. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't come out. We were sitting in the garden and I said, oh, why don't we go out for a walk? And she said, oh, no, daddy, I don't feel very well. So, oh, right, okay, what, what's wrong? So I just don't feel very well. But if I have an ice lolly, I'll feel better. I was like, <laughs> okay. And then in my mind, I was like, right, okay. Genius. Yeah, but then in my mind, I was like, okay, let's play this game then, shall we? Let's play this game. So go okay. get a lolly, give the lolly, start having a lolly. Oh, are you feeling any better now? Oh, yes, daddy, I feel, I feel better now. Okay, so I thought I'd leave it a few seconds. Mm-hmm. Should we go out for a walk? Oh, no, daddy, I still, I still don't feel very well. But... Well, sweetheart, you, you just said that if you had a lolly, you'd feel better. And you just told me you feel better. So mm-hmm. should we go for that walk? And she has this face of crap. <laughs> it's got me. <laughs> and then literally really begrudgingly, she goes, okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, yes, score one for me. <laughs> yes, I've got a walk out of you, girl. <laughs> yeah. I've just tricked my four-year-old child. Come on. Score well, one. as long as you're proud. Yes. <laughs> Oh, hello, everybody, and welcome to A Daft Question. This is the podcast where we debate the questions you never thought you needed answering. David Evans here, and joining me, as always, every week. If five needed to become six, they'd go to this man for harmonisation. Mr. Mike Malins is with me. Hey, yo. <laughs> that was good. I was going to say, how does that rate to last week's? Um, I, I've always dreamed of being in five. Yeah. So, um... I, I'd, I'd say that that beat beat last week's. Who would but you I'm be? I'm a big fan of The Rock. Ah, uh, but who would you be in five? Would you? Would you oh, be? I'd, I'd be the new. I'd be the other Jay. I was going to say Jay, Jay was the rapper, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I've got them all down to a T. <laughs> I did think today. Who would he say? And straight away, yep, Jay. He'd be Jay. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see I'm predictable. <laughs> Um, so on the podcast, obviously many questions to answer this week. Um, if you're listening to the podcast and you've enjoyed it, thank you very much for listening. And if you've got iTunes, just give us a five star review and a comment. I know that every single podcast in the world asks you to do the same thing, but it literally takes you five seconds if you've got iTunes. You literally could be on your phone now, listen to it, and just go to back onto iTunes and put the comment on. It just takes, especially for a little old podcast like us that can't compete. Sorry, yeah. David, what were you saying? That was just on my phone. <laughs> on iTunes. What did you say? Give us a five-star review. That's what I'm saying for you Apple people. Oh, I, I don't know if we're a five-star kind of show. What, what was it? Your cousin said we were the best podcast, best British podcast. Well, one podcast, one cousin said the best podcast you'd ever listened to. Yeah. I'll be honest now, that was slightly taken out, well, slightly taken out of context because it was the only one she'd ever listened to. So by default, it was the best one she'd ever listened to, but we're having it. Yeah, um, yeah, but my other cousin said, "Yeah, it's the best new British podcast." It's a take. But she hasn't, but she's a Spotify person. But uh, yeah, just don't really care about them people. Then anyway, uh, you said that, not me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thankfully she lives in America. <laughs> yeah, uh, so do that. And obviously, if you've got a question to send in, people keep asking me about how they send the questions in. I say people keep asking me. People I know, and I'm thinking, how do you actually be listening? Then, do they? Yeah. People say, how do I send a question in? Well, there is well, a we, section called listener questions. And we, we do we say mention the socials <laughs> and the email address on this. So, so, so Mike, if them. people want to send a question in and follow us on socials, how do they do that? Simple. On our socials, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram. So just give us a follow on at a daft question. Give us a question, give us a DM, or simply email us on a daft question at gmail.com. Simple. Classic. Simples. Simple. Don't don't do that again. Simples. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what the noise is. Right, before we get into this week's questions, let's do correspondence, Mike. Correspondence. Uh, people's views of their of their of our questions from last week. Mm-hmm. Any correspondence in the mailbag? We do. Good. I'm so glad. Because <laughs> <laughs> one week you're gonna go, no. No, no one's listened. <laughs> um so last week, I had a few texts saying, questioning whether I could eat, uh, beat 16 10-year-olds. Yes. This week, everyone's questioned if I could only eat 24 Subways. <laughs> I'm not going to please anybody doing this. In fairness, I did have a Subway for lunch today. Did you have tuna? Uh, no. 
sadly, I had the spicy Italian. Oh, okay. And I had a Subway as well. Whee! <laughs> does Mrs. E know about this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> she does now. <laughs> she does now, yeah. Right. Subway, eating. What were people yes. saying on that? So um, the original asker of the question, Matt, at Matt Alica, UK, Matt, yep. um, basically said that tuna was too bland for him. And he would go for a, a BMT, but okay. he'd only be able to manage 12. That's still a good feat, though. It is, but don't question me about the tuna choices. If I can double the expected amount that I can eat compared to you. Okay. I mean, he, he sounds like a lovely guy. I'm not slagging him off oh, Matt is, the podcast. Yeah, Matt is a great guy. Good guy. Um, but he, he, he had a bit of a theory. He'd have two in the first hour, have the second, third, and fourth hour of a rest, you know, for poos and coffee breaks and stuff. And in the fifth hour, he'd have another two and just repeat that process. Okay. Do so at least think, he's thought about it. Yeah. Do we think we might need to try and get Matt on as a guest and you and Matt can have almost like a Subway eat-off? You need to come, obviously, pre-prepared with the Subways and see how many you can eat in an allotted time. I mean, I'm game. <laughs> if he is. Well, it's in Matt's court now. We'll see what he says. Any other correspondence? Um, we do, yes. Um, so I think I think you need to apologise to, a, to a, a country, David. There's been quite a bit of a uh, storm mm. on Twitter. Yes. I say, I'd say quite a bit of a storm. There's been one person that's been annoyed that you called a microwave a, pip -tip -tip, a poppity ping. Yeah, I have been um, led astray with this scent. I've been told this story two or three times. So mm. I think they're all winding me up. But what did said person say? So apparently, pop to ping is slang for microwave, but okay. nobody says it. Ah, okay. Now, <clears throat> I've been practicing this. Now, the actual micro, uh, microwave is Mercordon. Okay, yeah, I think that's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll allow that. Yeah, so you're wrong. And there we go. Mercordon. Mercordon. Me okay, that, that was just sounding like something else mm. not welsh no oh, that was was that lee hasdell on that one um that one was lee hasdell yes am i right thinking on the tweets as well he says that in welsh carrots is it's moron. A moron yes ah. i was just about to lead into that david so thank you very much sorry you're welcome for butting into my <laughs> my bit of the show <laughs> okay so apologies to the good people of wales for misinterpreting um, your interpretations of microwaves uh, Michael, any other correspondence this week? Um, yes, so we had um, at Ben Husband, who um, came back with his own Fireman Sam theory. Okay, yeah. Now this, again, this probably makes more sense to you than it does to me. Mm -hmm. But he's convinced Ponty Pandy and the seaside village where Shane the Chef is located are one and the same. Yeah, I saw this. I had a chat with Ben Alex, and I fully agree. And my mind is quite blown on that, that yes, they could be the same seaside town. Okay. Um, the thing about Shane the Chef, it, again, it'd be a programme that you may come to know in the next mm. few well, months. Well, no, I've been, she's not watching it after our <laughs> conversation last week. <laughs> but Shane the Chef, as you said, he's like a chef in a, seeds, in a seaside town. Say that again? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he makes really, like, healthy meals. Like, oh, you know, oh, crap, we need to... He doesn't I'll say crap, but the kids' version of that. Oh, darn, we need to make a healthy meal. I've got half an hour left. I've only got a radish. What can I do with that? And he cooks up like a five course feast. Um, and he puts these meals together. And you're like, I'm watching a kid's program to forget about how I need to cook a healthy meal, not to be reminded of it. Right, okay. Look, I've got turkey twizzlers in the oven ready for later. They're back, aren't they now? Apparently so, yeah. They're back. Jamie yeah. Oliver must be <laughs> pissed off. <laughs> but, you know, I want something that I just don't remind me I've got to eat healthily. I'm yeah. here to zone out. You don't want that from Feynman, Sam. No, yeah. It I've had like, enough trouble by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple of people message me saying, I'm never watching Feynman, Sam in the same way again. I'm not surprised. And don't worry, the Ponty Pandy conspiracy file will be reopened in another episode. There's more to go. Yay. Yay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Go on. Um, so, simple throwaway comment of white trainers last week. Apparently, a few people have said, just stick them in the washing machine. Okay, yeah. For your white trainers. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to give that a go, and I'll let when, you know. When you say a few people have said that, anyone Two. specific? Yeah. To my mum. Yeah. And um, some woman called Rebecca. 
Maidley? I have no idea who that is. No, no, I've never heard of her. Um, so two people have. Okay. Good. Told us. Good. And finally, we we asked the listeners yeah. if anybody knows why there is a one normal generic pigeon. There's no old pigeon. There's no young yep. pigeon. Yeah. And we asked the listeners if they know the reason or can elaborate any further. Let us know. Well, nobody even answered it. So we've got no, we've, we've still none the wise on that one, I'm afraid. Um, I but think it's still out there. Okay. There might be, I think for next week, I know there's an email in the email box about baby pigeons. Is there? There is, yeah. Where did that come from? Uh, it only came through about a couple of hours ago of recording. Um, but it, I, it remind, when, oh, I say, yeah. Yeah, it, when I say reminded me, it, this should have come as a shot in the dark to me straight away when that question came up. I'd completely forgotten about it, which doesn't look quite good family wise. Um, but maybe we'll read that one out next week. So I think there's some questions on there as well. There is. We'll deep dive into Baby Pigeon Gate, as it okay. were, uh, next oh, week. Oh, yeah, just at the bottom there. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Leave that tease in for another week. <laughs> oh, we're teasing them now. We're teasing them. <laughs> um, I'm waiting for the... I know we're on episode three, but I am waiting for the episode where we get a question in from somebody that we don't know. <laughs> That's the dream. That's the dream. But we'll have an email and we'll both be like... Do you, do, you, do you know this guy from the Maldives? <laughs> so Who's we're, this? We're looking out for a person that we don't have either an acquaintance through Twitter or just generally family people to send us a question. Mm. There must be somebody. Hopefully. There must be somebody. Uh, so correspondence, all wrapped up? Anything all else? All wrapped up. All wrapped up. Right. I think it's time for oh, questions. No, there, oh, 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 no, there's one no, more. No, no, no. no it's, it's, I've flipped over my brand new notebook Ooh. onto listener questions and uh, it's ignore that okay crack on, all right. crack on play right. the jingle shall we do questions play that jingle let's play that jingle right mike it's time for the uh, first question of the show now obviously yeah. when we're a bit hungry at lunchtime we like to pop out to the shop if you haven't made a sandwich at home already and buy one of those lovely pre-filled sandwiches from the shop so make our choice from the big selections that we have but mike my, my question to you is is it acceptable to add more food to a pre-filled sandwich. 100%. Now, when you said this question to me as part of the list, I was thinking, right, I've never done this. So either I've been quite sane right. to not do this, or I've really not lived my life. Well, it, it only came about um, because we'd, we'd been out and we came back and we'd bought some sandwiches. And then Lucy went for a nap with Ivy. I uh, bought a chicken and stuff in sandwich, I think it was. And I thought, oh, I'll just add some cheese into this. What? Yeah, I'll add Sorry. some cheese. To a chicken and stuffing sandwich? Cheese goes with any sandwich. Right, okay, let's just part that a sec. Okay. <laughs> let's carry on the story. <laughs> We're going to revisit the cheese on that sandwich. <laughs> so, um, so I sliced some cheese, put it in my sandwich, started eating. Ivy couldn't go for a nap, so Lucy and Ivy came back downstairs. She looked at me and was like, have you added cheese to that sandwich? I was like, yeah. And the look on her face was a pure disgust, as if I'd just committed some hideous crime. Not because it was just cheese, but because yeah. I've added more stuff to the sandwich. Oh, uh, right. So it got okay. me thinking, is this acceptable? And I don't see why, why, why it's so wrong. Well, I, think, I think in essence, there's probably no reason why you can't do it. I guess... The idea of going to a shop and picking a sandwich that's already pre-filled is you are accepting that you want the filling in that sandwich. And I don't know what else you would add to certain sandwiches to make it better. Cheese. <laughs> Maybe. Tell me a sandwich where cheese, like a decent sandwich, I'm not talking about like prawn mayonnaise or anything like that, like a decent sandwich where cheese doesn't just top up that flavour. Swan. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you heard me last week. It's, it's illegal. Uh, Have you got rid of them swans out of your fridge yet? <laughs> what doesn't cheese do better on? Um, I, was, I need to be like in a sandwich counter now to look at the <laughs> options. <laughs> just give me a sec. I'm just going to pop out to shops. Would you, so, but would you, I don't know. Let's just... <sighs> So I'm more of a takeaway person. I would take stuff away from the sandwich. 
because I want this core really? elements. Yeah, because like there's core elements of sandwich that I want, but there's bits I don't want. So it's easy with tuna, for example. I'm very much a tuna mayo guy. Right. Tuna cucumber, for example. I hate the cucumber. So I'll buy, if there's no tuna mayo, but there's tuna, tuna, tuna and cucumber, I'll buy the tuna and cucumber. Yeah, okay. Take the tuna uh, cucumber. Yeah, off. I'll do the same with tomatoes. Yes, exactly. If there's a tuna and sweet corn, it's too difficult. So I'll just begrudgingly eat that sandwich. If you, but if you had the time and the patience, would you take the sweet corn out? Yeah, but I need like a, some tweezers when I should individually take bits of sweet corn out. This is, this is the image I've got now. That just little things like that, your sweet corns or whatever, and you're, you know, you've got no, five can't. minutes alone in the kitchen. It's like, <laughs> pick this out, no, pick this out. I don't go that far. I'm not that crazy. I wouldn't. No, tomatoes, yes, but that's it. I, I tend to look for a sandwich that's got everything I want. But then if I come back and I realise, I don't know, if I've got a BLT, yeah, and I've obviously taken tomatoes out, but I've got strips of chicken in the fridge, okay. I'd have no problem with adding that to the sandwich. Or cheese. Okay, yeah, I get that. That's acceptable. How about like a chicken and bacon? I'd add cheese to that. <laughs> Oh, that cheese do everything. <laughs> right, firstly, let's go back to the chicken and stuffing. Yep. How are you adding cheese to that? That just does not make sense. Uh, I mean, it's, it's quite a simple process, David. Well, I know, just... yeah, 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 I get the process. <laughs> but what, okay, what flavour cheese? Was it just a mild cheese? Was it a certain flavour cheese? It's um, mature cheddar. Mature cheddar. It's, it's, what have we got? Cathedral City. It's just more that if it was chicken, I'd probably be like, okay, can kind of get that. But it's a stuffing element. You wouldn't Why? have. Why is that putting okay. you off? Okay, so would you have cheese involved in a Sunday dinner, a roast that's got stuffing in it on that plate? Yeah, but it's different when it's not a sandwich. <laughs> but you've got it all mixed together. You can eat individually. I mean, I would, if someone said, "Oh, I've accidentally grated some cheese on top of your Sunday roast," fine, no problem at all. I'd eat that. I know you can have like cheesy cauliflower, for example, but you can have that separate. So you could eat that firstly, because I hate the fact that with cheesy cauliflower, it could mix into the gravy. That's not a good combination. Well, that, it's all about distribution of where you put it. Play it there, then, David. Right. Um, and this is that, just, that wouldn't bother me. This is just reminding the story. Are you, a th- are you a thin gravy or a thick gravy kind of guy? I am very much thick gravy, and good that lad. question that question's on the list. Oh, is it? Episode. <laughs> Don't you worry. I saw a tweet about it the other day. It's on the list. Okay, cool. But this whole Sunday roast thing now has reminded the story of third year at uni when mm-hmm. we went to uh, the Newbridge Carvery. Right, uh, yeah. Down the road from me. And we took our friend Eddie, who was from Ireland. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he'd not well, only... Have you heard from Eddie? <sighs> no. No? No. Um, he, might, he might be listening to this. He, he might know. be. He's still got my Claxons album. <laughs> never got it back. Um, oh, I he, might have that. He, <laughs> he never had eaten a Yorkshire pudding. So we were all watching him in like gaze of like... I can't he, remember this. We were like, oh my God, he's going to eat it. Like seeing him eat it, we like, what's the reaction going to be? And he was like, yeah, it's all right. I think we were all a bit like, oh, right, okay. Just expected a bit more reaction. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if it's a Yorkshire pudding, yeah, a beautiful thing. If the first, if if you've ever if you've never tried one and you try it for the first time, I'd love to go back to that day where I tried a Yorkshire pudding for the first first time. The sensation in my mouth would be one of joy. And we are you someone still that will pour gravy into that Yorkshire pudding? And perhaps I used to do that a lot as a kid. Treat it like a cup of tea. Drink the gravy a bit out of that Yorkshire pudding. I was with you until you said drink it like a cup of tea. Well, you know, drink so it. So I, like... I pour gravy inside yeah. my Yorkshire puddings, but yeah. then I just eat it with a knife and fork. Oh, game, no. Oh, you just, you got to pick it up. Have a shot of it. Have a shot of gravy out of that Yorkshire pudding. You, you, you questioned me for adding cheese to a sandwich. And now we're level. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, yeah. Okay, you'll have that one. Okay. That. okay. So is it acceptable to add more filling to a sandwich I'd, 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 I would have I mean if you went to a pick oh yeah but people had crisps you had crisps to your sandwiches don't you have you I've done that before but as in like a plain sandwich it not, not nothing in it just two pieces of bread crisps yeah, but in the middle I'd have my chicken stuffing and then get my hula hoops and squash them <laughs> and 
put them in between the two slices of bread. No, um, maybe not hula hoops. I think playing like walk, like not plain walkers, but walkers crisps, which are flatter, that can help with that distribution. But that's why you break up the hula hoop. So you've got four little pieces that you just, with your tweezers, you can just <laughs> strategically lay them next to each other. Oh, um, yeah, maybe. So have you, you've never added to your sandwich? I probably have in the past. A pre-bought Yeah, not a pre-bought. Sandwich. Like if I made a sandwich at home and I've, add, I've put some and then I've had a bite and be like, actually I could add, egg. oh, I've got so-and-so in the fridge. I'll add that in there. Nice. So why would you do that with a pre-bought one? Because I think... I'm also almost a stickler for the rules. I'm also almost accepting the sandwich that I have bought. And also, if I'm at work, for example, there's nothing probably going to be nothing in the fridge, for example, at work that is mm-hmm. mine that I can add to it. Yeah, I mean, I, I do accept it does depend on, on your surroundings. Yes. If you're no, at I'm, home, you could eat it. If I'm at home, like, yeah. boom. But if, if we all went for a picnic or something, I mean, yeah. Picnic, I probably would. If I went to in-laws, if I went to in-laws yeah. and we'd brought over sandwiches, but they'd already made, I wouldn't turn around to them and go, oh, got a bit of cheese in that fridge. <laughs> yeah. Because that, I could, I could understand why, I mean, that just looked greedy. Would you, ha- would you add like a whole Scotch egg? Just this massive Scotch egg in the middle of your, your chicken and stuffing sandwich? It wasn't my first thought, <laughs> but I'd, I'd be up for it. That's what I mean. Is there a limit to the the size of the food that you're now adding to the never, sandwich? Never, never. <laughs> <laughs> a little little chicken and stuffy sandwich, and then you add another foot long Subway in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah, from a chicken stuffing sandwich, it actually turned into a roast dinner in a sandwich. <laughs> I had the Yorkshire pudding, the Brussels sprouts, the gravy. You just put it the two pieces of bread between the plate and just yep. like scrape it on. But if you toast the bread, it makes it a little bit harder, a little bit firmer of a sandwich. <laughs> So don't go uh, everywhere. Um, okay, this question. I'm going to say, yeah, I think I'm going to go for it. I'm going to say, yeah, it is acceptable to add more, more to it. I'm going to go for it. Right, should we have another question? Boom. Right, many soap operas, Mike, in the UK. Um, and one of them is EastEnders, which follows the trials and tribulations of people who live in... in live, blah, 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 that place, that's where they live. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that place, that. They live in the fictional area of London called Walford, and in that it's Albert Square is a kind of little square that's in there as well. Um, but my, my question to you is because in these soap operas, you have different kind of scenarios going on. You have marriages and divorces. You have murders. You have, I don't know, buildings blowing up, people getting stabbed, people, things like this. Bombs falling off into the corner shop. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so my question is this. When people in this fictional series go to live in Wolford. Why don't they ask what the area is like? This has bugged me ever since you put the question forward. Like it would just make total sense. Like if you and I were to move into a different part of Wolverhampton slash Manchester, yeah. then we would Google, go on Zoopla. Go, this, I, I'd 100% go on TripAdvisor for Queen Vic. Yeah, exactly. You'd yeah. say, oh, there's a pub. All right, well, let's see what TripAdvisor say. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry, what? It, it, it's blown up how many times? There's been how many deaths? <laughs> like, if you go and look around a house in an estate agent, and you're thinking, oh, this is quite a nice house, and then you ask the obvious question, what the name is like, I yep. just wonder what the estate agent's going to say. Like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, Ian next door, quite nice. He's had five divorces. His uh, son's killed two people. He's kill two people himself but look, you know look, lovely family but he's turned he's turned a corner yeah. <laughs> or the stage agent just kind of dodges the question what's the neighbors like the area's got a lovely laundromat but yeah but <laughs> what's what's the area like laundromat in the summer you see the sun glorious <laughs> ab- above the houses you can't they can't nobody but but imagine if they did if they said oh what's the neighbors like and they told you so Ian Beale, and you give them that spiel, and you look to look to your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, and be like, "Yeah, I can see us. I can see us living here. Yeah. That kind of people. That that's even more disturbing than not finding out at all." It just doesn't. Yeah, just from a I know it's fictional, but from a logical point of view, it makes no sense. Even like in like the garage as well. There's people who have been chucked and yeah, 
fights down there. Like, again, that wouldn't do well on TripAdvisor, surely. But, but even the people who leave Walford, if they actually get to leave, that is. Tell people. Yeah, there must be like websites out there going, do not move to this area. This is my experience. This is what I know has happened to other people. Slaters move out and they chat to someone. Like, oh, we're looking at a property in, Wolf- in Walford, Albert Square. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> should give it a go. Like, it's just not, not going to happen, is it? Talking of what you mentioned there about deaths happening, I thought I'd do a bit of research of whether okay. anyone's catalogued this, and people have catalogued this. What, how many deaths in Albert Square? Yeah, so since the start of uh, East Maybe Enders, they need to look at this website then. <laughs> there's been 123 deaths in East Enders. Since the start? Right? Since the start, Since the start, right. Okay. Now, obviously... No, that was we... just last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, like a soap opera, there's going to be... It's, it's trying to mirror real life to an extent. So there's obviously going to be serious um, illnesses that's trying to portray the real life of what happens and, um, to these people and what happens in the aftermath. So there's obviously there's a lot of serious things to do. Mm-hmm. But when you start... So that's what we're going to exclude from this list. But obviously, okay, then you then. look at the ones that you don't exclude. Yep. <laughs> look, at how, look at these deaths. Now, if someone threw this website at me, I'd start getting very worried, right? Okay. Yeah. So start looking at some of these uh, deaths. We have got um, Arthur Fowler. He was he died by being bludgeoned with a lead pipe. So you're like, okay, all right, bit of murder there. We'll start there. Um, Sas- Saskia Duncan bludgeoned with an ashtray. There's a bit of a okay. theme going. Bit of a theme mm-hmm. you'll notice on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, another one, hemorrhage from falling debris. Um, Steve Owen, blast injury from a car explosion caused by himself. Which one? Steve Owen? (laughs) No idea. Um, Again, another one. Trevor Morgan, blast injury from an explosion during a house fire started by himself. Okay, yeah. People, people, you know, not able to do things themselves. Um, What were the other ones I found on this one? Uh, Right, here we go. Den Watts, bludgeoned with a doorstop. (laughs) <laughs> they've got creative haven't they oh, it gets better hemorrhage after being bludgeoned by a frying pan who was that uh, that was uh, to... oh that's Pauline Fowler I was trying to remember this. that seemed to ring a bell uh, what are these ones on here here we go uh, Trina Johnson um, impaled on a rake I was like, you don't, go, I'm it? sure you don't get these in any other <laughs> normal village. I mean, I've, I, I've not heard of what, one death on my street. <laughs> uh, uh, Heather Trot, I think I remember this one, uh, bludgeoned with a picture frame. I, I think I heard about this one. Yeah, again, it gets... It's so, they, get... so someone obviously looks at the doorstop and thought, no, we need to, we need to be better than the doorstop. <laughs> what have we got around the house? Frying pan? No, it's been used. <laughs> Ashtray? No, no. Photo uh, frame. Uh, Carl, Carl White bludgeoned uh, with a car boot lid. With a car boot lid? Yes. So the boot? I would say so, yeah. Or the door, the door to it, I would think. So someone's really? whacked them in the head with the door and they've died yes, from so it. The boot, right, the, the boot. Um, Ronnie Branning drowned after being weighed down by her, her own wedding dress. And was this quite e- was this quite easy to this- find? Like, if anybody wanted to move into Albert Square, this is what they I mean, could just yeah. Google Albert Square deaths. Someone's realised the you know the horror of living in Walford and thought, right, I've got to do a service to everyone. We, we need you to let know. everybody know. Uh, there was another one on here. I'm sure. Um, oh, here's another one. Uh, this is the the recent, the most recent death in East Africa, right. which is only about it might be like last week or two weeks ago. Chantal Atkins impaled by a knife after being pushed onto an open dishwasher. I mean, that, that is some way to go. I need to see this, but right, you've got an open dishwasher, which is quite, you know, apt for later on in this episode as well. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, so what, I, I presume from this, uh, impaled by knives, so there's a knife sticking out of the dishwasher. It's not good dishwasher etiquette, is it? Where would... But it's going to be sticking out enough for you to be impaled by it. See, that that's just screams to me someone who doesn't know how to stack a dishwasher, David. 
and we might talk about that in a bit. But I look at that and think, right, okay, some obviously serious incidents that have happened over the years of illnesses and murders. But there's some I'm just thinking, people like bludgeoning people with items around the house. It seems quite popular. <laughs> yeah. It seems a popular feature. We need to warn the fictional people. How do we get a message out? How, yeah, how do we get a role in EastEnders? <laughs> to prevent try and people, tell the people from moving into the soap and therefore cancel EastEnders altogether, yeah. just for the safety of, of the country. Yeah. We need to figure this out. I, I don't know. They could be listening to the podcast. They could be, yeah. And they'd be like, crap, we've got to start putting this into storylines. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't really get that then, how people seem to move there and don't question it. It's almost <laughs> as if they're getting paid to do it. <laughs> but there could, <laughs> there could be a storyline there, though. Somebody tries to move to the area and he's a bit unsure about it. I don't know. Or I don't think it's got legs, though, that storyline, no. really. <laughs> there could be a storyline of somebody, like a newspaper comes to the area and like somebody moves in undercover and questions people, learns about the history of everyone, and does a big expose about how Warford's the worst place to live in the UK. And then EastEnders is cancelled. Yeah, and then they get bludgeoned with a... Have you got beef with EastEnders? (laughs) No. Is there going to be more conspiracy theories coming out? I just... I am um, concerned for the well-being of the fictional residents. And that is awfully decent of you, David, and I applaud you for that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my my beef with EastEnders. I just care for the well-being of those residents. You watch he said this when you see a new family move in and just lie back and go, ah, fool, <laughs> and drink your cup of tea. Yeah. Or just call up the producers, no, not them. Don't do anything <laughs> to them. <laughs> oh, They've got a puppy. They've got the whole life ahead of them. One of them's going to sleep with Ian. Hang on, this might be another question. Okay. You rarely see animals or dogs or cats in soap families. That's true. Wasn't there one years ago they did have a dog and he was like his best friend? I can only think of Schmeichel in Coronation Street. Yeah, I wasn't a Corrie fan. Oh, I'm more, I watched... see, I'm more Corrie than EastEnders. Mm, I, I don't watch any soaps now. And that's the North South Divide right there for you. It is. So, you're, so are you saying you're a Southerner? Oh, no. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm just... not, not with that accent. No. <laughs> Right, so what we're saying then? Um, why don't clearly, you... yeah, they clearly they can't be bothered. No. That must be it. It must be a quick turnaround. Yeah. We need to find somewhere. Or oh, this place is house prices. Do we think they're quite cheap? As a result, they must be. And why don't people question that? Uh, yeah, why not? It's it's the middle of London. These five, house bedroom, prices... five, five bedroom house for just two hundred grand. <laughs> Everything all right? Yeah, fine. Just want a quick sell. <laughs> well, that's a good price, isn't it? And there's local amenities in the area. <laughs> yeah. There's a pub on corner. <laughs> Let me just like Google it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't worry. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Is that a fresh liquor paint? Oh, yeah, just re- renovations, you know. It's fine. <laughs> um, so why don't people ask about what the area is like? Like you say, Mike, we're just saying they are just stupid people. Stupid people. <laughs> right. Should we have another question? Go for it. Mike, dishwashers. They are yep. a saviour to us all. Love mine. It's one of the best inventions ever made. It is. Um, until Mrs. E and I moved in together, I'd never had a dishwasher before, and then I realised, what am I missing in my life? Yes, I completely agree. I was, I'm the same. Um, I used to have a, when I was a kid, we used to have a rotor with me and my sisters about washing up duty. Yeah. Yeah, me and my brother yeah. did. Yeah, you used to have it stuck up on the wall in the kitchen. Oh, there were, no, we did, well, see, it's probably a bit difficult with you because there's four, there was four yes. of you in total. Yeah. But it was just me and my brother, so it would be, we just take it in turns. So one day I do the washing up, he does the drying up and putting it away. And the uh, next day he does the washing up and I put the. Christmas was a bit of a bitch because <laughs> <laughs> I'd always try and get out of it. I, tell you, I remember coming home from uni one Christmas and Christmas Day and whatever, and they just got a dishwasher. My mum just got a dishwasher. I was like, okay. brilliant, happy days. This is so much better. So I'm like, well, I'll, I'll do the good thing, and I'll start clearing up and putting it in the dishwasher. So I'm getting other plates, and I'm doing this on my own, and I'm going back and forth, giving my, my brother evils, because he's just sat there drinking beer. I'm like, yeah, I got up and did the initiative, and yeah, I'm the nice one, but you're still sat there, like, doing nothing. Come and help me, Dad. So I'm putting him all in the dishwasher, and I think I might have said something to him. I said, Lee, you going to help me or what? And he just turned around and went, oh, mum, have you not told him? Dishwasher didn't work. (laughs) 
I was oh. gutted. The, it was stacked, absolutely stacked. I thought, great, I could just bang it in here, wash a couple of pots, carry on with my beer, drinking, play some games, brilliant. But he, no. play, he played you. Dreams. Played you. Were crushed. Uh, yeah, me and my sisters, we had this rotor that was stuck to the, the wall in the kitchen and it was very much separated. As one of us would do washing up, one would do yep. wiping up, one would do putting away, and one person would get a day off, as it were, because there was okay. too many of us. So we, the, it, we had a very um, interesting system. Everyone got a, a day off in the week. Yep. Um, you, we didn't do our birthday. You got your birthday okay. off. Okay. And you also got Christmas Eve and Christmas Day off, I think. But every every... That's, the time. that's because your mum's a, a lovely yes. mum. Yes. In fact, let me just, hang on, I'm not saying my mum isn't a lovely mum. <laughs> just clarify <laughs> just, that. Just make that point. Um, but that is a lovely thing. For, that, that's your mum all over that. Yeah, it was a, a, a nice colour-coded rotor on the wall. That's, that's your dad all over. <laughs> <laughs> I think, though, I don't think, I think we may have stuck to that for like a year and then it just probably got forgotten about it and went out of the wall. But I do okay. remember having a rotor. Anyway, back on the question, dishwashers. Oh, yeah, yeah. The question is, what is the best way to stack or fill a dishwasher? Mike, I presume you have a method to your dishwasher I do. stacking. And please, can you give us that method? Uh, in this household, there's probably only just one thing that we disagree on. But in previous jobs, I've had to office shared office space and about to maintain the dishwashers yes. and whatever. So I've had experience with that. <clears throat> now I would say it's common knowledge for anybody. Top shelf, your glasses and your cups. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Can't be, you'd be surprised how many people in the shared office space or probably around the country, or whatever, will open a dishwasher and not even look at that top shelf and just stick it randomly at the bottom, right? First off, if you're ever going to have a cup of a glass, you put it down. Yes. Right? Again, people just... What? No, people don't put that down. No, people would just put it up. As you would drink it, as you're drinking your tea now, they would just put it in the dishwasher at the bottom of, bottom shelf right? and then crack on. And the thing about putting it on the top shelf is that on the bottom shelf, depending on the design of the dishwasher... Sometimes you'd put a glass in or a mug in, but because of how it's designed, the, it's almost like the space is too big for that mug. So you put it in or put the glass in, and you could tell that it's just going to move about in the dishwasher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so mugs and glasses at the top shelf. Completely I don't think, that. I th yeah, I think that's, yeah, yeah. across the board, that should be if fine. If you are running out of space, do you accept putting bowls at the top? Uh, well, I actually, I do actually put our bowls at the top. Yeah, okay. Just because of the space at the bottom. So we'll have the spaces will be filled with the small plates and the big plates. And yep. You can't really get your ball in the position that you want it to be to utilize the full dishwashing yeah. capability. Okay, yeah. So I will, yeah, predominantly, obviously, cups and glasses, but I will put balls up there as well. Um, and as I said, you put your small plates, you put your big plates, small plates at the front, big plates at the back. My beef with someone else in this household. Okay. Um, is how we put the cutlery in. Uh, okay, can I just, before we do that, go back to your plate one. What are you yep. saying? You put small plates? Small plates at the front, right. at, the, at the bottom shelf, so you put yeah, them at the yeah, front, yeah. and you put the big plates at the back. See, I don't know whether it's, because I, like I said before, dishwashers, some, some of them are, uh, have uh, set out differently. Yes. I would be, let's say, imagine on your bottom shelf, you've got two rows of where you can put your yep. plates those plates are going in line, the same size plate on either side from the front to the back. So in, in the Evans household, it's the left-hand side, all small plates, front to back in a row, right-hand side, big plates, front to back in a row. That makes and my, sense. <laughs> it does, they, all, they all fit in. And they're all in line, they're all unison. But then you've got... But the issue I have in this household is that I always like to put it, the, the little plates on the left, big plates on the right, and Mrs. E likes to do it the other way around. And that annoys you so much that when she's not looking, I have to switch the plates back around. Really? Yeah. You're one of them. <laughs> I'm one of them. See, I'll be honest, that I'll press play and leave it. And as long as it's washed, <laughs> to be fair, I'm quite happy. 
Um, right, so hang on. Right, so you put left hand side, you put all your small plates. Yeah, in a row from front to back. Right hand side, you put your big plates. Yeah. No, it's a bit, yeah, okay. That's so not I'm, trying to, I'm trying to understand how you do it then. So you're putting all the plates, no matter what, at the back. Yeah, so, so we've got two runs. Yeah. At the back, we put the big plates. Yeah. And then at the front, you put the small plates. Okay. I can because, understand because that. Because then if the, small, if the small plates are full, then you can still quite easily reach over and put the big plates at the back because you've got the, you've got the space. You can obviously clearly go over the, the small plates, whereas yeah. if you put the big plates at the front, you're having to kind of go over that and then back to put your small plates. Okay, yeah. So that makes I get, sense. I get that logic. I get that. Okay. I'm not going to disagree with that. Okay, cool. I'm happy with that. I may even try it as oh. a difference. Oh, see what happens. Let me know. <laughs> you know what my findings were on that one. And I, okay, you, you try that and I'll try your plate method. Okay, and then we'll take pictures, put them on the <laughs> ground, and we can let people and vote. vote. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the better method? So, right, this is what we want. If you listen to this and you've got a dishwasher, and those people who haven't got one who are just like skipping this section of the podcast. <laughs> Just, tr- just, dream, just dreams of having dishwashers and we're just kind of rubbing it in. Yeah. If We obviously want to know if you have a completely different method on the usual channels. What are those channels, Mike? A daft question on Twitter and Instagram or email a daft question at gmail.com. Uh, but if you do one of those ones and try doing the other method and let us know what you think as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go right back to the end where you were for my cutlery. Yes. Where, you, where do you disagree? So now, again, I think this varies in different dishwashers but we've got two i don't know what you want to call them buckets i suppose yeah, where you put okay, the cutlery yeah. in yeah. in the front now my method no, no lucy's method is you put them handle first so in the top of the cutlery is sticking out so as you look at right, it yeah, you, can, yeah, yeah. you can see the fork yeah and you see the handle come down so the yeah. fork bit is sticking up yeah okay got that my method is either way around. Oh, that's controversial. Right, okay. Now, this is my thinking. Okay. The reason why I put it down so the handle's sticking up is, A, the water's coming up from the bottom. Yeah. So the main bit of the cutlery that you want washing will get washed more oh, effectively. That, that's a damn good theory, that is. But also, when you pick them out of the uh, dishwasher... Yeah. Do you want your do you want Mrs. E's grubby fingers on the bit of the fork where you're going to stick that into some chicken and cheese? What are you trying to say about Mrs. E's fingers? I think she's got lovely hands. No, she has got grubby hands. It carries. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I know Lucy would be bothered that if I stuck my thumb and my finger on the spoon bit or the fork bit, the knife bit. Yeah. Then for her to then pick it out of the drawer and then to use it, she won't be happy. Okay, I get that as well. I might try that as well. I might try do it the other way around. But you're the other. Way, so you're the other way around. I'm the other way. Yeah. So um, what's your logic for that then? Uh, my logic is just put the, like you say, like Lucy says, with the actual utensil at the top. Just why? Them in. What's your reason? <laughs> There's no reason. It's just what I've always <laughs> done. <laughs> just plunk them in. I've never thought about doing it the other way around. It just seems it, it makes sense more efficiently it and makes more sense hygienic. Now. Unless you have to wash your hands before you enter the dishwasher. Do you want to know some perhaps things that we have been doing wrong with loading dishwashers? Would you like to hear some potential facts? Yes, so always. Obviously, if, if, I, if I get anything from doing this podcast, it's facts. <laughs> <laughs> so I did some research on obviously Googling best ways to load your dishwasher. And I found this website from uh, rd.com which talked about the let's what the title of the website is 12 ways you might be loading your dishwasher wrong. Right? Okay. Ready for this? So you stick up a couple of things, you know, not relevant. One about the water temperature. Don't really care about that. Right, here's one. Um, loading dishes on the top rack, right? Dishes should always mm-hmm. go on the bottom rack because it's specially, specifically, yeah, specifically designed <laughs> to hold them. So we're saying that, yeah, Yeah. bottom rack, that's fine. We're doing that right, okay. Um, This one is about them face, or they all need to face the same direction. I never really thought about this, actually. I guess you can have them facing different directions when you you put them in. Um, The plate or bowl direction is important to ensure proper cleaning. Bowls go on the top rack. The ones in the rear should face forward, while the ones in the front should face towards the back. This allows the water to reach them. 
Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, okay. Um, one, your bugbear about loading uh, glasses and mugs. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, when you're getting close to a full load, it's hard to resist cramming a few stray glasses whenever they can fit. But True. The upper rack is designed specifically to clean glasses and cups. Boom. Uh, put, uh, place glass and dishwasher safe plastic cups face down so water can reach inside. So we're all right with that one. So we're getting on, on all right with this side. So far, so good. So far, right. Okay. This is the one which I'd like to do if I had the time, but I can't be asked to. Okay. Right. This is about separating your silverware by type. So, yeah, I'm forks, with you on that. Yeah, uh, stuff like that. It might seem logical to place forks, spoons, and knives in their own compartments, but mixing them together will help get a better clean. Ah, this is interesting. Spoons, especially, can nest together, making it harder for water jets to reach their true. surface. Yeah, um, you sound like an expert. Yeah, true. <laughs> Um, a real simple website suggests alternating between handle up and handle down to prevent this. If your silverware basket has a hole or slot for each individual utensil, feel free to mix away. So that one's actually saying you should mix it up. They're saying mix it up if you're going to stick your spoons with your spoons, your forks with your forks, uh, so they don't clump together. And the other Which, one... Yeah, thinking about it, because spoons, certainly spoons will naturally just fit together won't they and yeah you, the middle one if you've got three together the middle one just won't get washed no point in that and you'll have that when you take them out and you'll still see some food that's probably left yeah. in one that has been washing you're like oh great i've got to wash that one again um and i think those were the the key ones everything else was just about kind of non-low dishwasher items but i think on that site we do most of that we yeah. don't do stuff wrong there may be a couple of things i think we've learned new there but i think absolutely the, but i think the key thing we've learned there is that People need to try those two different versions. I think so. I think and, it's only fair. Yeah. And tell us, I don't think there's not a right version, but what's the better way for you to load? Oh, there is a right version. Forward? There is a right version. <laughs> yes, there is. And it's my version. Um, so best way to load a dishwasher. I think we have to, we can't answer that one yet. Well, the top shelf, I think we we're both agreed on. Yes. The bottom shelf is the key. Bottom shelf is the, is the one that we've had a slight disagree on. I think we need to get the listeners to decide the answer on that question. And hopefully for next week's episode, we'll have the full answer. So, what, so what, we're, what we're asking them? Are we asking them the cutlery asking, and the plates? Yeah, so we're, we're saying uh, for plate-wise, how do you stack them in? Do you stack them in a row together on one side so they're in unison? Mm-hmm. Or do you do what your method is, is you put them all at the back? The big plates at the back. Big plates, plates, plates at the front. the front. Okay, and also with cutlery, cutlery up, up or, or cutlery down? down. That's what we need to know for next week. And I can't wait to see what the answers are already. Well, unless it's Pigeon Gate all over again and nobody <laughs> decides to respond. <laughs> right, another question done. Shall we move on to listener questions, Mike? Go for it. So listener question time. You can obviously send us your questions at a daft question on Twitter and Instagram and a daft question at gmail.com. Michael Malins, what listeners have sent us questions for this week? Stop, David. Um, this Rebecca Maidley, who we've never heard of again, back again, has emailed in a question which I think at some point or another, every single person that's, listen, that's listened to this has either asked it themselves, answered it, got into a discussion, whatever. I don't think there's one person that's never been involved in a conversation okay. regarding this question. David. Yes. Is a Jaffa cake a cake or a biscuit? Mm. Yeah, I think easily that this is a cake. Yes, thank you. Because the bottom layer is basically a cake that you would find on a cake. Yeah. That's my reasoning for it. And I think what deceives people is because it's sold in the biscuit aisle and it's it's packaged like a biscuit. And that means that means nothing. Yeah. Like you can get Jack Daniels in a whiskey aisle. Doesn't mean it's whiskey. I think it's just because because it's, how, it's where they've been sold in the supermarket and it's how they're packaged. But they yeah. are basically just a my, packet of mini cakes. My theory was, if you leave a biscuit out on the side, it goes soft. Yes. You leave a cake on the side, it goes hot, hard. Mm-hmm. You leave a Jaffa cake on the side, what does it do? I've never tried, but I'm sure you can tell me. What it goes it hard. There we go. It's a cake. So it's a cake. Straight away. Done. Becca. Next question. Next question. 
Okay, another one that I think everyone's been involved in, in yeah. one way or another. Now, this comes from at Lee Hasdell on the twit, Twitter. Brown sauce or ketchup on a bacon butty? Right, okay. I think this is key because I think there was a couple of people said their future listenership of this show would be based on this they answer. Did. They did. Um, now, if you had to give me those two choices, it'd be oh, brain, you, so- oh, it'd be brain oh, sauce straight away. So you're saying that you would there'd be other options for you oh it's it's barbecue over that straight away no it's not yeah barbecue yeah bacon sandwich barbecue any kind of sauce that you can have on that sandwich it's barbecue every day of the week for me I asked this question to Lucy and she said mayonnaise (laughs) which I forgot about actually because I do put mayonnaise on the bacon butties oh what mayonnaise and tomato ketchup no that is Mm. but then again you could level up with the chicken, the cheese on the chicken stuffing there, I think. That is just as bad. Hot bacon sandwich, putting mayonnaise on. Well, it's, it's her choice, not me. I know, but that's running. But then her thing of why are you putting cheese on chicken and stuffing? She just thinks it's because I'm greedy. <laughs> can't put mayonnaise on a bacon sandwich. Come on. Well, no, it's not me. I'm, I'm a brown sauce guy. But then, I'm, I'm sorry, that mayonnaise has, has took me back now. Would you put mayonnaise in a sausage sandwich? I don't think she does. She, I mean, she likes mayonnaise. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if... We, we rarely have sausage sandwiches. Okay. Um, she doesn't... Surprisingly, she just likes Richmond sausages. That's it. She doesn't like your Tesco finest or your butcher sausages. It's just Richmond sausages. Um, okay, so I'm saying brown. You're saying I'm saying brown. Brown, good. I once someone said I can't remember who it was, but someone once said to, said to me, having this discussion with somebody, they said, "Red sauce is for boys, brown sauce is for men." Okay, yeah. And I've lived with that. Yeah, I've got it tattooed, tattooed on my back <laughs> ever since. Right. Okay. So brown yeah, sauce, brown all the way, sauce, on all the way. Next question on the uh, the question sphere. Next question. Gail Beardsley from Devon on the emails has asked, why do children always knock down towers and, ca- and sandcastles, etc.? Why not just let them stand there magnificent, adore the beauty, why do they have to go over and knock the shit out of them? Because it's I mean, fun. She didn't say the shit. I just <laughs> I added that to, it, to that. Yes, I, I it's agree. It's fun, isn't it? That's the whole point, isn't it? I think when you're older, you, want, you appreciate it and you want to preserve it somehow. No, you don't. I think as a kid, you're just like, right, I built it now. Let's kick the crap out of it. Yeah, but I don't, I, even, it's not even, I, it's not even stuff that the kids have done. Like, I remember our next door neighbour, and I was 11, 12, mm. and he'd built this castle out of beer cans. Right, okay. In the yeah. garden. And it was basic, like, you had 20 at the bottom, then 19 and 18, that kind of tower. Um. And he loved it. It was great. And I came out the back door and went, watch me, mummy. Bang. He was fuming. He, and we'd only moved in like two, three weeks. <laughs> so we were just getting to know the neighbours. And my mum's like, what are you doing? Get back in house. How big was this kind of beer castle? Oh, it was, well, it was taller than me. And I was, okay, that as I was... said, 10, 11, 12. And was it... Maybe was it was there a, primary school. Was there a depth to it? Could you actually go inside the castle? Or was it just no, no, like no, no, a no. statue, so, as it were? I, I, it, was a, it was a tower rather than a castle. Okay. And it was, as I said, you started with, let's just say, 20 cans at the bottom. And it was 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, all the way up to, to one at the top. And I just ran through it. I think with all of us, there's just that temptation in life to go, yeah, let's just kick the shit out it's of that. It's so much better. Yeah. Like, but we, like, people, if you see, like, a local demolition... People will stand there and watch it fall to the ground. There's yeah. something about watching something just crumble and fall. They've been queuing up for six hours to watch for something to crumble in like 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> it, is weird. Just... It, it is weird watching those demolition videos, so like old power stations that get like demolished. And there's that weird thing of going, that's oddly satisfying, that is. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, might be, I might be a bit weird here. And I'm not like this in my day-to-day life, but I, I mean, watched that had, video. You had, you had cheese to chicken and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I watch that video, watch those kind of videos and just think, oh, I want to clean that up. Every time, like you see the debris, the dust, it goes everywhere. And you just think, who's going to clean that up? 
it's like in superhero films when there's been a massive fight in the city and the superheroes go off and they've saved the day and there's somebody going, oh, cheers for that. <laughs> Just sweep that up. It's like in, um, in Man of Steel, that final scene when um, ba- um, Batman, Superman and um, Zod basically destroy yes. the city. And yeah, you yeah, just yeah. think someone's there going, the local councillor thinking, oh, right, how are we going to clean this up now then? Yeah. <laughs> All that damage. But yeah, I think it's, I think you do, even as an adult, yeah. you watch the videos or whatever, you do it because it's just fun. Yes. I think for that question, it's completely acceptable any age. Yes. Thank you. Good. Cross that off the list. <laughs> right. Now, Matthew Hobbs on the email. Good old Hobbs. Has sent a question. Do we have to start precursing every question now with, do we know them or not going forward? Because one day uh, in this podcast, we might go, hang on a second, I don't know them. And you'll yeah, say, Yeah, I think same. unless we say, unless one of us says, Who's that? Yeah. Let's just presume that we know who they okay. are. Okay. All right. Okay. So Matthew Hobbs on the email. Matthew Hobbs. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? It's a classic. It is a classic. Do we need to break that down? Right. I don't think, well, I mean, not in my answer, but go on. Well, my answer would just be seven. Seven. Why just go? Seven? Just go with. Se- I don't know. Just seven. There's nothing <laughs> behind that. You've just thrown out a number. Yeah. I hope you get text messages this week saying seven. Well, let's break it down. Okay. How much wood? Right. Mm-hmm. So you have got wood. Could Love. a wood chuck? Wood. Chuck. Chuck. Right. right. Do you want me to say it again? You say it again. How break much it down. Wood? But, yeah. How much wood? Could a wood chuck chuck? Okay. If a woodchuck could chuck wood. So basically, they're saying that woodchucks can't chuck any wood, but if they could, how many would they chuck? But that's been presumptuous, isn't it, of the woodchucks? It depends what their strength capabilities is, how much wood there is, what's the weight of that wood. Their mood. I mean, that's stereotyping woodchucks straight away. 100%. I think we should find these woodchucks and do an investigation and say, look, these people can chuck wood. I'll be honest, David, when I signed up to this, I just wanted two hours where I just came on, chatted to you, put it out there and see what happens. Now you're telling yeah. me I'm going to find a bloody woodchucker and it's ask a cha- questions. It's a Channel 5 documentary waiting to happen. <laughs> Jay McDonald presents it. <laughs> so tell me, what are the struggles you've had with people not thinking you can chuck this wood? I tell you, she, Jay- sing, <laughs> she sings songs in between each bit. <laughs> I'll tell you, Jane, it's been that, man, this... <laughs> Can't go oh, and... love. Oh, love. Tell me. Tell me about it. Can't go in supermarket without people <laughs> just throwing a piece of wood across the... the, the... Catch! <laughs> right. Um, oh. I'm saying seven on that one. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Do you, not, do you not want to hear my answer? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm being yeah, I'm being presumptuous. It's not all I, about you, David. I apologise, Michael. What is your it's answer? Dave and Mike on this podcast. <laughs> How many Jeez, do you, think? you edit it, you, out, you think of the questions, you put them on, up, up online. Do you not listen to the edits? It's just basically me talking throughout it. I cut I all your out. That's why, that's why I've got sound issues. <laughs> right. What's your answer, Mike? As much as they want. Good, good. Right. Yeah. Any, <laughs> any, okay, moving on. Any other list of questions this week? Yes. So... Oh, I need to. I need to go on the Instagrams. Hang on. Oh, we got some Insta questions. Yeah, I thought I'd written it down, but I haven't. <laughs> no, was this on ADQ, ADQs or was it a mine? Let me find out. While you're waiting, ask a daft question on Instagram if you're finding out where these questions are coming from. Here we go. Right. We go. So from Ella and Alex Clark in the US of A. Okay. Want to know if eating a mermaid is considered cannibalism? Oh, that's interesting. Mm. That's interesting. Right, okay. Um, you'd have to say yes because part of it, part of the mermaid is human. Right. I think it. I think it depends on where you start. Okay, that is true. Yeah. So if you go- went, if you went for the the shoulder, for mm. example, then yeah, hundred percent, you're a cannibal. But if you down. decide to start at the fins. At the bottom, then no, I think you're okay there. And just stop at the waist. Yeah. <laughs> right, love. Thanks for that. You can carry <laughs> on with your life now. Swim back away. 
Go on, Ariel. See you later. Has anyone battered this 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 towel yet? Can we uh, can we put it in a batter? <laughs> oh, what would you have with that um, that half a mermaid? Well, the thing, right? Why would you be eating a mermaid in the first place? Surely, you'd be on like a desert island, and it's you've just got to eat what you can do. Yeah, desperate times, desperate measures, isn't it? So, I don't think I'd be that fussy. If, I mean, ideally, if I could go down to the local shop and pick up mermaid, then I'd have chips with it. Yeah. Smother some tartar sauce, squeeze a bit of lemon on. Good. Would you be um, having any curry sauce with that? No. Oh, curry sauce every day of the week. I'd, I'd be having cheese. <laughs> <laughs> just grate a bit of cheese on top of that. Missy Z, if we ever go to the chip shop, she'll just have uh, cheesy chips. Um, and you just think, oh, they must have prepared this in advance. And you can just see them in the corner just getting a massive <laughs> bag of grated cheese and just whacking it on yeah. the packet, put it in the microwave. I'm thinking, I could have just done that at home. Could have saved myself some money. I've I've never been a, a cheesy chips kind of guy. I was never until I got with Mrs. E, and then we used to have it a bit in Liverpool when she was at uni there. Oh, okay, um, but I wouldn't have it myself now. I've just grown out of it. Some people haven't. No, I mean there's there's stuff that I used to eat as a kid that, and I'm trying to think of stuff that I used to have as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, the other day, I say the other day, maybe about three months ago, I made jelly and we had ice cream in the freezer. So I was oh, like, I'm having jelly and ice cream. Yes. Suck it. That's great. That is I, great. I, I, I have no point in eating that now. So, uh, mermaid wise, cannibalism, we're saying depending on the half. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you started at the top, then 100%. But if you were like, if you just wanted the fins and just to eat up to the waist. If, if you went past, no, I think if you went past the waist, then no, you just continue. I'd, no, if you start at the bottom, then you're not. Okay, good. We know that question. Any more listener questions for this week? Um, one more. One more. And then we get We've to got... surprise question. <laughs> <laughs> um, from at Stu J4Z. Yeah, good old Stu. Twitter. Why is it impossible to find a decent balty pie anywhere other than a football ground? See, I know you have, you had a clarification on this on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I agree with you on this one. If you go anywhere else, get it from a shop, you get it from a fish and chip shop, they're just not as good as what you find at a football ground. I don't know what the football grounds do to put the magic in, but it is the best at a football ground. I think it's because you lot down there are eating pocket pies. Yes. Yes. You need to try Holland's pies. But then at football grounds, you won't always get pocket pies. Yes. But that's what I'm saying. So if you, outside of a football ground, so if you found a Holland's pie, chicken right. balty pie, yeah, you you wouldn't have any complaints. In fact, you'd, you'd probably think it was better than the one at the football ground, because Holland's pies are genuinely the best pie you can get. And how much did Holland's pay you for that infomercial? That's none of your business. <laughs> While well, you took it to a pie halfway through. Um, so I think you're eating the wrong brand of pie and you're yeah. eating the wrong pie to be fair like who eats okay. a chicken balty pie if you went to holland's pies it's peppered steak pie every day oh of week. yes in fairness though, if i do have it at the ground i will have a chicken balty pie because that is the best option available because you're only eating pocket pies <laughs> this is a pepper 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 steak pie did you say peppered steak pie oh that holland's. sounds good that sounds just, good just google holland's pies and then look at what they do okay. honestly next time next time you're up I'll try and get some Holland's pies. Okay. Or I mean, that, I, or next time I come down. That'll be what, 20, 28 maybe <laughs> with lockdowns? 28 other years. Yeah. 28 more years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think, Stu, for that one, we're saying you need to try Holland's pie first before yeah. we can establish the answer to that question. Indeed. Okay. Listen to questions, John. Thank you very much, everybody, for sending them in. Please keep sending them in for future episodes. We're going to have another question now, and it's time for surprise question. So, Mike, it is my turn this week to ask you it is. the question. Um, every week we do this segment. Basically, neither of us, depending on who is answer, asking the question, knows what question is coming. You've got to just answer it off the cuff straight mm-hmm. away. So, Mike, are you ready for this week's surprise question? Nope. Good. Anyway, this week's surprise question, Mike, is this. Mike, what is the largest animal that you could pick up, hold against a lamppost, Tie it against the lamppost with cling film so it stays to that lamppost without ripping away. 
Right. That is the question. So, repeat that for you. The largest animal that you can pick up, hold against a lamppost, use cellophane or, uh, yeah, cellophane to wrap it around the lamppost so it's kept held up on the lamppost, but that that cellophane keeps it stuck to the lamppost so it therefore doesn't kind of get clawed away, as it were, or break away from that cellophane. It's original. I've, yeah. ne- I've never <laughs> thought of it. I'll be honest with you. It's, There's been many um, a night where I picked up a tortoise and thought, right, let's stick you to this. Right. I don't think I could do a, a farmyard animal. Okay. So you can pick up like a sheep, for example. No. What? And then hold it with... So essentially, this animal, I have to hold with one hand up against the lamppost and then yep. cling film it around the lamppost. Yes, post. yes. And also, it's got to be strong enough that that animal doesn't perhaps naturally break out of it or can claw out of it, for example. I mean, I feel bad because I've got two of them, but a cat? I guess you could do with a cat, but then you've got to make sure that its claws aren't in it because it could potentially claw its way out. Yeah, still. But, yeah but I'd, I'd, I, could, I could hold a, I'd hold a cat up with one arm. Yeah. And then quickly wrap it around and then I could let go, carry on wrapping it around and then claws are redundant. <laughs> okay. So we're saying a cat, anything else? Is the cat the largest one you could go for? I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to big myself up because I'll get text messages saying, well, a pig. <laughs> Depends Is on it, the size of the pig though. Could be a piglet. Could you do a piglet? Yeah, easy. But what's bigger, a cat or a piglet? <laughs> um, depends. I'd say a piglet, though, in mass, surely. Right, I'll go piglet. Okay. Pig- <laughs> We're obviously saying don't try this at home. We don't want to see any evidence of what other people have done. No, try it in a garden instead. Much, <laughs> much bigger area. So we're saying that a piglet is the largest animal you could do that? I think so. I mean... <sighs> You see, this is the problem with the surprise questions. I don't get any time to think about it. No, you've got to do it off the cuff. And you're then just, when, when other people it. send in their answers, you think, oh, crap, yeah, could have said a, a cow. You can hold a cow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Baby what cow. What animal did you go for? Um, I kind of said snake. A snake? Because <laughs> if you think about it, you could still pick up a large snake, depending on the size of it. You could wrap it around... So there's no claws to claws to claw out of it. Are you wrapping the snake around the lamppost first? <laughs> and then I, putting cling film around it? I hadn't thought of that. I just thought about putting the snake flat. But yeah, you would actually wrap the snake around the lamppost. That would that be a good tactic. And then wrap... Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, I'm going for snake. Snake or piglet, who wins? The listeners decide. I wonder if I could do a swan. <laughs> you know, in theory, you could... As long as I don't kill it. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be a live no, swan. But I'm going, with, I'm going with piglet. I think I could do okay. a piglet. Okay, we're saying piglet. Right. That's surprise question done. Next week, it's your for return serve. It is. And okay. I was going to go animal bits as well, but I'm going to have to think of something else now. <laughs> right. Should we do a uh, last question? Let's finish this off. I'm tired, mate. <laughs> right, Mike. Many a time as a kid, we'd watch uh, those breakfast shows, like live kicking, and they'd mm-hmm. have completely stupid... Uh, competitions yeah one of those i remember was a competition about um what is the biggest crisp that you found in the crisp packet and you okay. have to send that in to the tv program to prove that you had this crisp yep. so my question to you is how would you send a big crisp in the post without or li- little breakage have you got any method for this no um <laughs> like i've been trying to wrap my brains around this and it I'm baffled. I'm baffled as to how anyone can do it. I mean, I, th- I think you might have little breakage. For example, I thought off the oh, cuff, could you vacu- could you vacuum pack it? You know where those ones where it's really, like sucks yeah, the air out. That'd break. It'd yeah, break I guess a... it depends on the amount. It, it depends what kind of crisp. Because if we go back to hula hoops, yeah, they're quite a sturdy crisp. Yes. They're quite a thick, so that wouldn't be too bad. So I was initially thinking your typical walkers. Yeah. 
So with a hula hoop, for example, could you just pop that in the post without any protection? I think I'd, I'd bubble wrap it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think if you, I'd definitely bubble wrap it and I think you'd be okay. And that's the same with like a what's it? Big what's it? Could you just wrap it in bubble wrap then? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think you could. Could you put it in a box with, you know, you could get those packages now with the air pockets? Well, yeah, you'd have you'd, no matter what, what you do, you'd have to surround the initial crisp and the wrapping, whatever we decide, bubble wrap, whatever, with other bits so it stays sturdy in yeah. that box. I just don't think I'd risk it with the walkers. How about like a, a Monster Munch? Or a, was it Space Raiders? Where you could actually make a like a vehicle out of the different crisps? Oh, I think you'd be fat. You'd be fine with them, I think. Yeah. But then you might, one of the claws. Yeah, one of the, like, the legs might break off. Yeah. Um... But I think the challenge is the traditional crisp, your Walker's crisp. How do, you, think... how do you sell one of those without it breaking? Uh, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. I'd, I'd struggle. I'd, I'd and, definitely... and I can't drive down. I can't <laughs> drive down and here you go, here's the crisp. Get me on telly. It has like, to be sent in the post. Would, would you put like a seatbelt, a little mini seatbelt around it, it, it'd, be, it'd be in a lunchbox <laughs> with a seatbelt over it. With, with bubble wrap in the lunchbox. <laughs> with bubble wrap. <laughs> um, I'd asked Mrs. E this question and she actually came up with quite an ingenious idea how she okay. do it. Right. So when she started saying this, I was like, I don't know how, this, how you're trying to kind of trick the TV people here. Mm. Well, what she what'd she do? She'd get the crisp, get a piece of paper, right? Right. Trace around the crisp. Mm-hmm. Right, then she'd get maybe a bit of cellar tape, st- uh, fold it over, stick it on the back of the crisp, stick it on that piece of paper, and then put it in a box ball, wrap it, and send it to the TV people. But her theory was if it does break, you have got evidence of the size of the crisp with the trace. Yeah, but you could be lying. Mm. Yeah, you, but... c- you could easily just <laughs> a massive circle. We've... If they were bothered You've to... just got like one small mini cheddar. <laughs> Could you imagine? This is my crisp. No, but I think the idea is that, you, that, that if the crisp broke into multiple bits, they could see the amount compared to the size and think, actually, yeah, that is probably the crisp. You wouldn't be daft enough, really, to send like a little cheddar. It's, it's <laughs> a better method than what I, what I had, I'll be honest. Oh, yeah. So I think... I mean, thankfully now... Our friends at Walkers, and I say friends because I've liked to tweet, our friends at Walkers have got a competition where you can just send a picture. Yeah. Uh, okay. Such simpler times. Yeah, that's not fun though, is it really? I like the thrill of sending it to the TV station and then when they show it on the TV, you go, it's still there, it's still intact. <laughs> I've been, I've, I live in Scotland and I've sent it to London and the postal system has allowed it to be intact. And then... And Philip Schofield just accidentally breaks it on screen. And you think, bloody hell. And him and Holly just laugh and laugh and <laughs> make some innuendo about it. And you're just there rocking back and forth. Thinking, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted that holiday to Kettering. Have you ever had a crisp and thought, I could send this in? I think I have before. I think I've had a big crisp and thought, whoa, that's a big bugger. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Yep. Um, what crisp? Can you remember what crisp it was? It would have been a Walker's crisp. I'm going to say. Right. My my history of crisp sizes doesn't go back that far. I'm going to be a honest. French fry would be a good shout. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that would be fairly easy. I still think that wouldn't be as sturdy though. You'd have to be really intricate how you bubble wrap that. No, but what you could do is you could sell a tape it to the inside of a toilet roll tube. <laughs> okay, yeah. And then just a quick cover the ends, put it in a box, bubble wrap, air pockets, whatever around that, send it off. That'd be good. That'd okay. be pretty decent. I think that, that would work, I think. That would work. Right. I think we need to know what the people would do on that one. Definitely. Let us know, people. I us think know. people need to send pictures in. We're not going to give you our address. We don't actually have the Big bis- Crisp. But what we do have is Twitter, Instagram, and an email yes. address, David. <laughs> well, we want people to send in pictures of their method. We want them to actually show us how they box it up or wrap it up, send it in post. I will be amazed if we get one person <laughs> that will take the time to wrap, up, wrap 
their biggest crisp that they've got at home and send it in. We'll just get a pic- we'll just get pictures of bubble wrap. They could tell us they've got a twelve foot hula hoop inside that, and we'll be none the wiser. Oh, I just hope someone does it. Someone must do it, please. Um, and I this think is e. Let yeah. this is E do that theory. <laughs> yeah, okay. let's see the evidence of that. I think that's where we'll leave the podcast this week. Um, thank you very much for listening, Mike. Again, on the socials, if people want to send in questions or just follow us in general for daftness, how do they do it? Instagram and Twitter at a daft question or send us an email a daft question at gmail.com. Lovely. And for this podcast, another podcast done, people are still listening, which is all I like to hear about. Um, One more week. One more <laughs> week. Um, I think we're done. Thanks, everybody. Mike, a bye from you. A bye from me. And it's bye from me. See you next time. Thank you.